If a man be proven guilty of murder, let him hang by the neck until dead. So read the law west of the Pecos in the late 70s. Because the law believed he killed a man, Jack Mahoney was on trial for his life. The verdict of the jury would determine his fate. Order in the court. I object. Objection overruled. Oh, who ever heard of a lady lawyer defending a man? Jack don't stand a chance in here. Be quiet. Order in court. But, Your Honor, what possible connection can my client's former occupation have with this case? I'm getting to that, Your Honor. Go ahead, Keeper. Have you ever engaged in professional prize fighting, Mr. Mahoney? I have. Is it not true you won a championship title? That's true. And you achieved considerable fame as the kid from Broken Gun. Well, I was known as the kid from Broken Gun. Now, Mr. Mahoney, will you please tell the court exactly why you were forced to give up your career as a prize fighter? Objection, Your Honor. A man may change his profession for any number of reasons. If you please, Your Honor. Objection! Your Honor! I am only trying to bring out the fact that the defendant was forced to give up prize fighting because he possessed of a murderous, uncontrollable temper. The same temper that caused him to attack and kill Matt Fallon. Your Honor, is this a court of justice or are we here to listen to malicious gossip? Gossip? <laughs> you should know all about gossip, young lady. A woman's place is in the home, not practicing law in a court of justice. And as for the defendant, well, I have my own opinions of any man who will stoop to hide behind a woman's skirts. Order in the court! Order in the court! He had every right to sock him. Order in the he court! He shouldn't have done that. Took the bait hook, line, and sink. All right, but you can only talk to him for a few minutes. Good to see you, Jack, but not in there. Hi, Steve. Hi, Smiley. You were sure good to see you at court today. When did you get into town? Just in time for the trial. Say, you sure give that prosecuting attorney one of those Mahoney button smashers. I guess I shouldn't have lost my temper. I'm afraid not, Jack. You did just what he wanted you to do. Yeah, you convinced him you was in the same fit of rage when you knocked off Matt Fallon. I never even got near Matt Fallon. They're just using me as a cover-up for the real murder. Tell us what happened the day of the murder, Jack. Well, that was the same day that Martin Donahue, my boss, well, he showed me a letter that arrived with a mysterious strong box. We were in the express office. It was Donahue, Matt Fallon, and myself. A prominent member of your community will receive the torn portion of this letter in a few days. He will present himself to you for identification and to take delivery on the accompanying strong box. Meanwhile, you are instructed to keep the chest in a safe place. CD. X is Mark. This box is heavy enough to be filled with lead. Lead or gold? Who is CD? Never heard of him. I don't like this. If that box contains something valuable, we're inviting trouble. Word might leak out it's here. Bring it to my office, Jack. Mr. Donahue opened the safe and put the letter away. Whatever was in that strong box sure was heavy. I got to thinking, maybe it was gold. I was about to go out again when something happened that took my mind off the chest and everything connected with it. Mr. Donahue! Mr. Donahue! You got that Miss Kingston acting as your lawyer. I like her. Besides, I think she's smart. All right, boys, time's up. Well, we ain't heard yet how you supposed to have killed Matt Fallon. You'll be in court tomorrow, Smiley. You'll probably hear six different versions of it. Well, we'll be there. Best of luck, Jack. Thanks. Thank you, Sheriff. All right. This, it's a man as dangerous to human life as a loaded gun. 
A loaded gun, ladies and gentlemen, that could be pointed at your heads. Could be pointed at mine. Did he say he had a pointed head? I'd like to call Mr. Call Mr. Martin Donahue to the stand. Martin Donahue. Here you are. Take the stand. I do. Mr. Donahue, have you at any time heard the defendant threaten the life of the deceased? Yes. It happened in the express office just after they'd had a fight. Jack Mahoney warned Matt Fallon that if he ever annoyed Miss Kingston again, he'd kill him. That'll be all. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. <laughs> I do. Miss Kingston. Have you ever heard the defendant threaten the life of the deceased? Your Honor, as attorney for the defense, I refuse to... You'll answer that question as a witness, not an attorney. Answer the question, Miss Kingston. I'll put it this way. Did Jack Mahoney tell Matt Fallon to stop annoying you or he'd kill him? Yes. Tell the court exactly what happened that same evening, right after you heard Jack threaten the life of Matt Fallon. Jack had asked me to go to the dance with him. We agreed that we'd meet in my office. Come in. Nothing. It's all right. Shall we go? Something happened. Oh, nothing really. We're going to miss the first dance if we don't hurry. Your wrists are bruised. Has Fallon been here? It's all right, Jack. I got rid of him easily. What did he want? Nothing really. He asked me to go to the dance with him. I told him no. So he got rough. Please, Jack. Forget it. Where is he now? I don't know. Please, Jack, forget it. May I come in? I saw you light, Gail, and wondered if you're working late. Jack and I were just leaving for the dance, Mr. Donahue. Oh, fine, fine. I may drop in later myself. I can't see why Matt Fallon wants to work at the express office on a night like this. Is he there now? I just left him about a minute ago. Donahue, you've got to try and stop him. Alan! Open up! Alan! Inside. It took several minutes to break down the door. By the time we got inside, everything was quiet. Shooting Sheriff Matt Fallon. Who did it? Jack Mahoney was in here. Sounded like a fight, then a shot. Mahoney, eh? Where do you go? Wait a minute. Well, Mr. Donahue. Looks like you've had a robbery, too. It's gone. That strong box is gone. Later, the sheriff found wagon tracks out and back. As though the thieves had made use of a wagon to carry the heavy box away in. Thieves? Why do you say thieves, Miss Kingston? It's perfectly obvious we're dealing with only one thief. And one murderer. 
A man who kills in a fit of temper doesn't stop to open a safe and steal a heavy chest. Really? And you yourself admit your clan killed Matt Fallon in a fit of violent temper. I didn't mean it that way. I was only using it as... No a... more questions, Miss Kingston. Thank you. Too bad she's not as smart as she is pretty. Smiley, who does she remind you of? Well, there seems to be some sort of a family resemblance, but I can't recommember what family. Well, I got a few chores to do, but you stay here and see what happens. Hey, don't worry about a thing. I'll not only keep track, I'll have this place hopping. Won't I, Joe? What says? I'm gonna reload, boy. Next witness. And he's offered to help. Well, maybe you can get Mahoney to admit where he hit that strong box now that the man who was meant to receive it has shown up. Oh, you have the torn part of that letter? Yes, here it is. Uh, that's right. Came in the mail this morning along with this note. Oh. Dear Doc, you always wanted to build a hospital to take care of the sick folks in your town. Take the little torn off scrap of paper you will find enclosed over to the express office in your town and you can do it. For old times' sake, C.D. X is Mark. Doc, Dr. Handy brought it right over to me, and I called Mr. Donahue and asked him to bring over the original letter. Dr. Handy, who is C.D.? Oh, I've known a lot of people and had a lot of patients. Could have been more than one C.D. I don't know. I think I do. Ma'am, could you arrange to have me call the witness stand first thing tomorrow? Well, yes. Uh, look here, if you have any information, don't you think we all should know? Not if C.D. is the man I'm thinking of. That information's cost too many lives already. Dr. Handy, when could I ask you a few questions, please? Any time, any time at all. 
Fine. Let's go over to your office. And don't forget, miss, be sure to call me as witness tomorrow. I'll do that. I don't like it, Gail. First Durango and now Steve Reynolds. Do you think he's bluffing about what he knows? No. Well, then you can't call him to testify. He'll spill everything. I'll call him as a witness because it would look suspicious if I didn't. You'll have to see to it that he doesn't go too far with his testimony. Court will now come to order. Your first witness, please. Your Honor, I'd like to have permission to call Steve Reynolds to the stand. Will Steve Reynolds come forward? I do. Mr. Reynolds, I understand you have evidence that will help the defendant prove his innocence. That's right. Will you submit it to the court, please? I will after I first explain something about it. I object, Your Honor. This trial will never get anywhere if we listen to every Tom, Dick, and Harry explain something. Oh, his name's not Tom, Dick, or Harry. His name's Steve. <laughs> order! Order! Tom, Dick, and Harry, what's the matter with him? All right, Mr. Reynolds, tell your story. Well, many of you people in this courtroom will remember back to the days of Sam Houston, when Santa Ana's invading army penetrated deep into Texas. A fortune in gold coins was hidden by Santa Ana when his army was driven back. A lot of people have searched for that treasure, but only one man ever succeeded in finding it. His name was Simran Dobbs, eccentric old prospector. He was riding the trails one day down in the border country. <laughs> The old fool. Hey, 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 Oh, holy smoke! Dad burned me with that. marked the location of that cave and headed back to town. Your Honor, I object. This story has nothing whatsoever to do with the charge of murder against Jack Mahoney. I gotta admit I don't see the connection myself, Mr. Reynolds. Jack Mahoney has also been accused of stealing a certain strong box from the express company. What would you say if I was to tell you that that strong box contained a large portion of Santa Ana's missing treasure? How about evidence to support that contention? Durango found this old Spanish coin in Martin Donahue's office yesterday. Let me see that. If Durango found that, how do you happen to have it? Maybe Durango dropped it. Well, now, it isn't often you see a coin like this. It's your idea that the strong box was full of these? Yes, Your Honor. And you think that outlaws were after some more of Santa Ana's treasure? It wouldn't be the first time. Simon Dobbs was to find that out for himself. He had a friend he figured he might confide in. Her name was Dixie King, and she worked as an entertainer in the saloon in Twin Forks. He couldn't wait to tell her what he'd found. Hello, Cimarron. Hello, Dixie. What's up? You look like you've seen a ghost. I found it, Dixie. I'm telling you, I found it. Found what? The, the Santa Annie Gold. 
And you've been so good to me, Dixie. I want you to be the first one to find out about it. Uh, are you sure? Here. I reckon that ought to prove it. Huh? Where'd you find it? Well, I found it. Oh, I ain't telling anybody. Not till I get my porridge, Steve Reynolds, up here from Trish McGallis to help me pack it out. <laughs> Watch where you're going, Rankin. I'm sorry, Dixie. Sure hope that clumsy idiot didn't get wise. Better telegraph your friend Steve right away. Once it gets out about your discovery, your life won't be worth a plugged nickel. Hi, right, George, I, I believe you're right, Dixie. I know you're right. After Simmons dropped from sight, I received a letter from Dixie King saying she was afraid the old prospector had met with foul play. I was to come at once. Steve Reynolds, friend of Cimarron's. You oh, are. of course. I'm glad you came, Mr. Reynolds. Come on over here and sit down. I'm afraid something terrible has happened to Cimarron, Mr. Reynolds. Well, maybe he's just out on another prospecting trip. Well, I don't think so. After locating the treasure, he came back here to tell me about it and was on his way to send you a telegram when he vanished. Were you the only one who knew about his discovery? Well, I'm not sure. I might have talked somewhere along the line. I thought it best to call you in. Well, thanks. Maybe if we work together, we can find it. You can count me in. Thanks again, miss. There was a hidden side of Dixie's character I was to find out about later. Miss Kingston, in some ways you remind me of her. I'm sure I've never heard of her. Durango was also a friend of Cimarron's, Your Honor. In fact, he was the first one to offer a reward for information concerning the old man's whereabouts. <laughs> All right, let's have it. You're pretty close to Cimarron, aren't you, Dixie? Yes. Sure, I've known him a long time. How would you like a cut of the treasure? What are you driving at? Just what I said. I'll cut you in for a share if you can get him to tell us where the stuff is hidden. You mean you've got Cimarron? Sure. How about it? I'd be a fool to pass this up. Good. Now, we've got to work fast and get him to talk before anyone stumbles onto that hideaway. Get ready to ride and meet me back here. I'll be back in 15 minutes. Simron's in the back room. Get busy on him. Well, I wouldn't trust that dame any further than I could throw a horse. Neither would I, but she's our last chance. When she's served her purpose, Well, thank heavens you found me, Dixie. See, how come you're running around with this Monroe and his gang? Oh, not really, Cimarron. It's the only way I could get to you. 
If you'll tell me where the treasure is buried, maybe I can make a deal with Monroe to let you loose. Well, I don't know. Say, did Steve Reynolds show up yet? Haven't seen hide nor hair of him. I reckon he's letting me down, too. The Durango Kid's on the trail of that gold, too, Cimarron. I think you'd be wise to let me put it in the bank for you. Durango Kid? He's offered a big reward for information about you. Means he's planning to cut you out. Oh, no, you're wrong about that, Dixie. I've known Durango since the cows come home. The only thing he'd be interested in is to know that I'm alive and safe. Supposing I work with him to get you out of this. Well, why not? I'll tell you. If you get Durango to me without getting shot up, I'll tell you where the cash is, and the two of you can look after it. It's a deal, Cimarron. But before I talk, you'll have to show me that you've been in touch with Durango. Well, how can I do that? Well, sure, I'll tell you. You ask him for a badge that I gave him years ago. You fetch that to me. And I'll know everything's all right. What kind of a badge? You ask Durango. I'll do my best, Cimarron. And you keep your chin up. <laughs> I'll try, Dixie. You hear me? I'm, uh, I'll try. Dixie's next step was to try and contact Durango. She felt if she could convince him she was truly Cimarron's friend. She might still beat Monroe to the treasure. Howdy, ma'am. What can I do for you? Where can I find the Durango kid? I don't know, ma'am. But when he left an order for those reward posters, he just left a note in the money here, that's all. Never did see him. Well, I've got some information about Cimarron Dobbs. I'd like to win that reward. <laughs> well, I wish I could help you, ma'am, but I can't. Maybe if you left a note for Durango. That won't be necessary. I heard what you said, miss. Then we can settle right down to business. Cimarron's being held in a hideout up in the hills near Buckhorn Peak. And I tricked the gang into taking me to him. Good. You just lead me to their hideout and I'll do the rest. It's not as easy as that, Durango. I was blindfolded when they took me there. Durango's in the print shop now. You come with me. The rest of you surround the place and let's get him. Do you know who's holding him? If I told you who was holding Cimarron, his life and mine wouldn't be worth a plug nickel. If you let me have that badge he asked for, maybe I can make a deal with the gang to free him. All right. Zimmerman gave me this once for helping him when he was arranging. Here it is. Get back there. The end of the trail for you, Durango. me handle this my way. Now he'll think I feigned him into a trap and won't string along with me. Never mind that. Did you get the badge from him? No, you wouldn't give me a chance. But I think I learned enough to get Cimarron to talk. The situation became a race against time in order to save Cimarron's life. Object, Your Honor. The court was led to believe this man would furnish positive proof which would clear the defendant of all charges. I challenge him to do so immediately. But it was necessary to explain certain things in order to do so. Necessary? Your Honor, I suggest this man's entire testimony is nothing but a stall. Better produce your evidence and make your point now, Mr. Reynolds. Your Honor, may I call Dr. Handy to the stand? Order! Mr. Reynolds, what has Dr. Handy got to do with this case? That strong box containing Santa Ana's treasure hadn't been stolen from the express office. It would now be the legal property of Dr. Handy, a man everybody knows and respects. Doc, come up and tell us what you know. Doc Handy was not only a friend of Simmer and Dobbs, he has information that'll point directly to the real criminals in this case. What temporary recess? Steve 
the excitement, somebody murdered Doc Handy. Murdered? Yeah. Whatever you do, don't let the jury bring in a verdict of guilty. You get on the stand and stall that trial till I get back. But getting on that stand is going to be suicide, Steve. Look what happened to Doc. You won't be in any danger as long as you don't talk about Santa Ana's treasure. <laughs> well, I'll do it if it'll help Jack. But it's going to be Smiley Burnett deceased before you get back. In that case, I'll bring you back a bunch of lilies, Smiley. But remember, no matter what happens, don't let them wind up that trial. Disguise so a killer won't know me. You've got to put me on the stand so as we can help Steve help Jack. The name is Mrs. Murphy. Is on the judge. Court is now in session. You've got to put me on the stand. Steve said. Get away from me. But it's to save Jack. Silence in the court. Does the scrub woman have to be finishing up her work now? Get her out of here. I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. All right, Eric, let her clean up this mess and then get her out. Miss Kingston, I understand Steve Reynolds was to continue his testimony today. Your Honor, Mr. Reynolds left town unexpectedly. I have no witness. You have to call me Mrs. Murphy. I told you to get away from me. What seems to be the problem, Miss Kingston? This, this scrub woman is no scrub woman at all, Your Honor, and I demand that you have her. She demands that I'm a star witness and take the stand. Order, who are you? Oh, I'm poor old Mrs. Murphy, star witness of the case of Mahoney versus all them other people. And you say you're a witness for the defense? That's not true, Your Honor. It is true. It is true. It is true. Shut up. Shut up. I mean, yes, sir. Your Honor, I had nothing to do with this, this person being here. Just a moment, Your Honor. I'd like to question this woman. Make it brief, Keeper. Take the stand. You say your name is Mrs. Murphy? What's your first name? Smiley. A little louder, please. I didn't quite hear that. Um, Mrs. Riley Murphy. Huh. Now, as Mrs. Riley Murphy, you would like to offer this court testimony in defense of the accused. Is that correct? I would. I would. Your Honor, I submit this witness is making a fraudulent attempt to tamper with the court of justice. Mrs. Riley Murphy. You again. Lock him up. Put him in jail. The court will come to order. I'm the judge, and what I say, it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. There's the prisoner. Did he do it? If he's guilty, he should pay. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law. But please, Mr. Judge, I was just the killing time. That ain't no misdemeanor. Killing time ain't a crime. He's guilty, 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 guilty. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. You have heard the testimony. He confesses, killing time. Against the law, against the law, against the law. Put a rope around his neck, stretch it high and let him fall. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law. But please, Mr. Judge, time attacked me in a sense. He was making me look older, and I killed in self-defense. He's guilty, 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 guilty. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. It's the law. It's the law. Killing time is a murder, murder in the first degree. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law. Now if he'll promise to do better, I will set the prisoner free. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law. 
Mr. Judge, go on and hang me. You found my only sin. I won't be out of court till I'll be killing time again. He's guilty, 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 guilty. It's the law, it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. It's the law. It's the law. At least I get to talk with you a little while before you go into court again. Smiley, they've just got to believe me when I tell my side of the story this afternoon. Well, why don't you sort of practice it a little bit before you get up in front of all them people? It's a good idea. The only trouble is it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, here's exactly what happened. When I walked into the express office, there were two men in there I'd never seen before in my life. Well, then I told you what I was going to do if you bothered Gail again. You're looking for a fight, Mahoney? Well, there's a couple of my friends right behind you. They're very willing to oblige. And this is going to be duck soup. <laughs> your next pal and put your gun away. Right. That's the last thing I remember until I came to in a little patch of woods just outside of town. I didn't even know Matt Fallon had been killed until the sheriff and his deputies caught up with me just a little bit afterward. There sits a murderer. You have all heard his, his unbelievable story. As members of this jury, you'll have no difficulty in arriving at a verdict which will serve notice to all lawbreakers. Justice still rules in this town, and wrongdoers receive no quarter. Your Honor, the facts are clear. The prosecution rests. Has the attorney for the defense anything to say? No, Your Honor. The jury will retire until a verdict has been reached. The foreman will tell the court the findings of the jury. We find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Jack Mahoney, you will stand and receive sentence. It is the judgment of this court that you are hereby sentenced to hang by the neck until you are dead. <laughs> We can all leave town separately and meet north of here. We're not through with Mahoney yet. What more do you want? He's convicted of stealing this treasure and sentenced to hang for the murder of Matt Fallon. Steve Reynolds left town to get evidence that might change all of that. Yeah, that could. Mahoney should make an easy target sitting in that cell. Yeah, you would have tipped. Besides, there are too many people expecting a cut of this. We could be gone before they get back. Don't do it, Sheriff. What is this, a jailbreak? No, we're just aiming to save the taxpayers a little money. Hey, what are you gunsels up to anyhow? Take care of Mahoney, Al. Use the Sheriff's gun. That way it'll look like he had to shoot him to keep him from getting away. You better duck, Jack, he's gonna shoot you. Drop those guns. All right, Sheriff. Let those two prisoners out. One of them is a murderer, Durango. Quit stalling. Take your keys and let them both out. Come on, hurry up. Don't get the Durango riled. He'll shoot you so full of holes you'll whistle the wind. Here, you get in here. Come on. I'm not going to let that man out. No, I am. 
some of them to come, Durango, but they're all here. Good. Now we can start the trial. You must be crazy. The citizens will bust in here any minute and put a stop to this. You're not going to let them, Sheriff. Get outside and tell them to stay out. Or else... Or else what? Might not be healthy for Judge Holloway. You mean you're holding me as a hostage? Smiley, show the Sheriff out. Lock the door behind him. All right, get up on the bench, Judge. Order! Order in the court. Will the young woman known as Gail Kingston take the stand? Now you listen to me, Durango. Quiet. You can't. Quiet, Judge. Jack, you're not going to let Durango get away with this, are you? Yep. Sort of curious to hear what he's going to make you say. You and Martin Donahue knew that Simon Dobbs was sending a large portion of Santa Ana's gold to his old friend Doc Handy, right? I refuse to answer that question. This is no court of law. In order to get hold of that gold, you had to make it appear as if it had been stolen from the express company office. You have an active imagination, Durango. I never heard of the Sandy on the treasure until it was mentioned here in court. But your sister knew all about it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this woman's name is King, not Kingston. She's a sister of Dixie King. Dixie almost succeeded in getting hold of Santa Ana's gold for herself. Simran Dobbs trusted her. So it wasn't too hard for her to fool the old prospector. Oh, say, did you get that badge from Durango, like I said? Yeah, I've got it right here. Why, that dirty What's little... What's up, boss? He's trying to give us a double cross. Yeah? That's it, all right. All right, you just cut me loose. I'll draw you a map, show you where the treasure is. <laughs> Give me out of here. I 
I've been tied up strong. My wrists and my arms are numb. You sure you got the map right, Cimarron? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I see now. Really bucked me off right there. And right over there it is, right there. Right where that cross is, that's where the treasure is, right there, see? Thanks, Cimarron. Don't mention this to Monroe or any of his gang until I get a You chance. won't have to. I'll take care of that myself, and you too. What are you driving at? Double crosses don't live long in this gang. I don't know what you're talking about. You will, pronto. Now that we have this map, Slade and I are getting out of here, alone. You mean you're going to try and kill us? You'll never get away with it. Oh, no. Get a rope and tie him up. This place is mined with blasting powder. It will look just like an accident. That's what you think. Reach and be quick about it. Your ankle. Take the gun, Simran, and get that map. What's that? Your funeral, Monroe. This place is surrounded by the posse. You're trapped. You made a mistake, Durango. It's your funeral coming up. Come on. Get out of here. Have that mob on us in a jiffy. Yeah, but he's got the map. He won't get far. Come on. King was arrested and sentenced to prison. The sister, using the name of Kingston and practicing law as a blind, took over where Dixie left off. She kept track of every move old Cimarron made. She knew that Dr. Handy was to receive a large portion of that gold to build a hospital. There's not a word of truth in any of this. Can you prove what you're saying, Durango? I'll prove who murdered Matt Fallon and Dr. Handy, Your Honor. Matt and Donna Hood take the stand. Members of the jury, I'm going to tell you what actually took place the night Matt Fallon was murdered. Martin Donahue and Dixie King's sister got into that express office a lot quicker than they've admitted.
took care of him. Now let's get the gold out of your safe. You aren't going to have any part of that, Fallon. That's right. You can't do that. We've all been in this together. You killed Fallon Donahue. He cut himself in on the gold and you wanted him out of the way. It wasn't hard to pin the murder on Jack Mahoney. It didn't happen that way. Then just how did it happen? This has been sort of an extra legal hearing. I've been judge and juror. Now I might as well act as executioner. Martin Donahue, unless you have evidence to the contrary, I find you guilty of the murder of Matt Fallon and hereby sentence you to die at once. No, no. You're right about everything except the killing. I didn't kill Matt Fallon. She did. It was her gun that fired. Killed Doc Handy, too. What's this mess? Order! Order in the court. Steve, you missed the whole thing. The Durango wound up the case in no time. Oh, he did? Yeah, and the next day the judge had a new trial and sentenced all the real crooks. Jack went free and... Oh, yeah. They're going to use the gold after all to build a hospital in honor of old Doc Handy. Hey, that's good news, Smiley. Jack, I guess the next time you'll think twice before you look at a pretty face again. Mm -hmm. There isn't going to be any next time, Steve. I'm never going to look at a pretty girl again as... Now, that's what I like. A man of his word. <laughs>